Yellow Jacket men returning home this week after the longest road trip of the season, four games in 11 days. Uh, Emmanuel, talk about um, what it's like to come back after a trip like that and where the team's focus is right now. Oh, um, yeah, it's great to come back after that. Finally have a little time to relax and tension's not so high. Um, it just, it's good to get back home, get some home games, get us a better chance to win some games. And your focus this week, uh, first on Seattle Pacific on Thursday, a very good GNAC team. They've won three in a row. And then you also have St. Martin's on Saturday. Um, how are you guys preparing for these games? Um, right now our focus is just this game on Thursday against Seattle Pacific. They're, they're a really solid team, as everyone knows. They won these past three games as well. So we just got dialed in on them. And you have been having a lot of success recently on the court. In your last game, you had a career-high 22 points against Alaska, and you scored in double figures your last five games overall. Um, talk about your comfort level out there. Um, just being more aggressive and realizing that the guys in the conference are scouting more. I haven't played as well the previous game, so the attention is more off me, more on guys like Mark Preston. So just getting an opportunity to be more aggressive. And talk about some of the players that you feel you've been connecting well with. You and Preston have been doing some good things offensively. Um, yeah, we're really connecting well with Pre me and Preston since um, Coach moved from that three spot to that four spot. Just pretty much just running our high low, and then me and Preston realizing we somewhat more have mismatches, so we can go sm with a smaller lineup. And then talk about guys like Mark that have been kind of carrying you offensively, and then Kendall getting back into the swing of things, starting again at point guard. Kendall. He's been, yeah, the coach has been telling him to be really aggressive. Mark as well. Mark's always in attack mode. Uh, it's awesome being back home, playing on our court again. Um, our, out of our 12 last games to come, eight of them are home games, which is a big advantage. I mean, it's home court, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to be back here and on our home court and uh, looking forward to playing Seattle Pacific and St. Martin's this week. Your thoughts on how the team is preparing for Thursday's game against the Falcons. Um, what are you guys looking forward to against them? Um, they're a pretty good team, very good team. Uh, I think with us, it's more defeating ourselves than anything. Um, the coaches are doing a phenomenal job of giving us game plans, and um, it's coming down to the last eight minutes of – It's every GNAC game is the same. The last eight minutes is what it comes down to, and who's going to make less mistakes. And um, I think that – these past two days we've had off and we've been doing a lot of soul searching and um, kind of working out our deficiencies as a team. Um, so this week we're going to really hold, it, hold each other accountable to that and uh, pick up these Ws. Yeah, against Fairbanks, EJ did, played really well. Um, he, he kept us in the game offensively. Um, and then Kendall's just been stepping up and, and kind of filling Jace's spot. Um, they kind of flip-flopped. You know, Kendall was hurt with his ankle and then um, Jace is hurt with his knee, so they just kind of, I mean, they're replacing each other kind of, you know. So um, I'm proud of them and looking forward to playing with them this week. And another guy who's really stepped his game up, Emmanuel Olafemi, just had his season best in rebounding with a dozen of those in his last game, and he's had a, at least one block in every game this season. Talk about having him in the lineup. Yeah, that's nice, you know. I don't have to go in there and take six or seven charges a game. It's nice having a shot blocker in there and someone that um, – He's just so long. I mean, he just he rebounds the ball really well, um, and then you know he's getting back into the swing of things. He wasn't he wasn't playing through the preseason and stuff like that. So now that he's kind of had a few games under his belt, he's getting more confident and he's getting back into the rhythm of playing. And then I mean, the GNAC's really competitive too. So we go against, go against guys that are really good, um, and he's starting to get the hang of that and really starting to develop on the team. You're nearing the midway point of the season. You're three and five in conference games. You have ten GNAC games to go. Just your overall assessment of where the team's at and some things you're trying to accomplish between now and the end of the season. We want to make the tournament. That's the that's the main goal. Um, I mean, preseason to preseason, conference is what counts. Um, so uh, we just, as a team, we're we're one game behind where we need to be. Um, and like I said, you know, having home games, eight of the, eight of the next twelve are home games and that's a huge advantage especially going up against some of the the teams that are ahead of us in the in the GNAC. Well I mean we, you know besides the besides not uh, having uh, a lot of success on the court it was a good trip you know uh, there was game times we played well and stuff we can build off of and then uh, you know there was other nights that we just didn't didn't uh, didn't show up you know I felt like we had a chance in in three of the four games I think Anchorage kind of took it to us in the first half and and uh 
you know, it was a, I think it was a 14-point game at half. We had a chance to cut it to eight, missed a three. They came down, hit a three uh, at the buzzer. So it went from us, you know, maybe being down eight to being down 14. But Anchorage is really, really good. So, you know, we just you never felt like we had a chance or never felt like we were in that game. You know, the other three games, you know, we had a chance. Obviously, the, the Nazarene game lost uh, – Lost by two, had the ball with three seconds to go. Central Washington game, you know, at the 225 point in the, in the second half, we were down six. And then Fairbanks, you know, we led the entire first half, led at halftime. And it was a one-point game at the uh, at the under eight media. So so we had a chance in all three of those games, um, in, in those three specifically. Obviously, you'd like to come away with a win. But uh, it was a good growing experience for our guys. It was, it was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of guys... It was the first time they'd ever been on that road trip, uh, any of the road trips. You know, we, you know, we're, we, we have nine guys right now, and only four of our nine have, uh, have ever even been on those road trips. So, so it was it a was good growing experience for those guys. You know, we're, we're learning a lot about, uh, you know, obviously who we are and, and uh, what kind of lineups we have to play just because of we've just had, you know, so many different guys either in or out throughout the course of the year. So we're still learning a lot about ourselves, but uh, you know, obviously, you want to win a couple games on that road trip. But um, I, I think I think we'll grow as a team just from taking, you know, that long of a trip. Highlight some of the individual performances. You know, both of the Emmanuels playing well. Emmanuel Johnson, a career high, twenty-two points in his last game. And then Emmanuel Olafemi um, breaking out on the boards, uh, his first double-digit game of the season with twelve against uh, in, uh, Fairbanks. Well, the thing about Manny is too, you know, he had 12 boards in 11 minutes. You know, we we just got to find a way to keep him in the game. Uh, with Manny, it's sometimes it's foul trouble, sometimes it's matchups. You know, if a, if a team has a guy that can really shoot it, you know, Manny has 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 trouble guarding guys that can shoot it at this point. You know, he's he's still trying to make that adjustment. Um, you know, Emmanuel played really well. Uh, Emmanuel Johnson played well offensively uh, against Fairbanks. Um, you know, he he basically offensively kept us in the game. Obviously, uh, you know the entire team needs needs to do a better job defensively, especially in the second half. I thought that, uh, you know, I mean, if you look at the stats, you know, we just didn't shoot. We shot it just awful against Fairbanks, and and you know some of that was their defense. Um, but but uh, you know, looking back at the film, when you do get open looks, you you, you got to make you got to make shots at a higher percentage than what we made it at, and made them at. And you know you know I, it's never it's always a team thing, but. You know, we have four guards right now that kind of play in those one, two, three positions, and they shot, I believe it was seven for 36, um, that Fairbanks game, and our three wings were five for 30, and, and they know, we've talked to them about it, they got to make shots, you know, and especially when you get that op an open opportunity, we have to make shots, and and um, I think because we shot such a poor percentage against Fairbanks, I think that affected our defense a little bit in the second half, and and uh, I think if, it, if the numbers are right, I think Fairbanks shot a high high percentage as a team in the second half, and so, so we just we we, we have to we have to make shots. We got to play. Uh, several of the guys know they have to play better, especially with the losses we've had, uh, personnel wise. You know, a lot of the guys have to. You know, some of the guys that 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 weren't playing as many minutes and weren't scoring as many points have to start stepping up because we've lost some significant uh, some significant points and rebounds and minutes to, uh, to, to, to a variety of reasons. Coming up this week, you have the last two GNAC teams that you haven't seen yet, Seattle Pacific and St. Martins. Uh, after Saturday, you'll be halfway through the conference schedule. Um, what's your approach heading into these two big games at home this week? Well, we know that, you know, we've played, a, I mean, the, the entire GNAC is a tough schedule, but we've played a tough, I mean, if you look at, uh, you look at the standings, we've played the number one team at their place, we've played the number two team at their place, and we've played the number three team at their place, Anchorage, Western Oregon, Alaska Fairbanks. So we know in our back of our mind we have, you know, we have, uh, we have all those guys coming into, our, coming into our gym at some point. Eight of our next 12 are at home. Um, and so, so we know the schedule gets more favorable as far as at least playing at home. Uh, these are these are two big games. Just because uh, you know when when you're on a little bit of a you know when you we hit a, a tough part of our schedule, we didn't react great because we we couldn't pull out uh, any you know any wins on that four game road trip. So so these are big games because we you want to feel good about yourself after after going on a road trip like that. You know the first thing you got to do is go back to work and practice, which we did. Um, but we also know Thursday night we have uh, you know. A, Basic, you know, the team that's been, you know, basically the best team in this conference uh, for at least, you know, the f the five years I've been here. Seattle Pacific has has been the best team in this conference, and and uh, you know, it, it, with Seattle Pacific, a lot of it, a, a lot of it is, 
you know, it, it's like it's it's like you're watching the same team, just different guys. In a, you know, in, and uh, they got a system. They get their guys fit into their system. They're bought in. Um, they play well together. They're on a roll right now. You know, they've won their last three. They play tonight, so if they win tonight, they'll they'll have won four straight. So, you know, we have our hands full. They're they're big. They, they don't make mistakes. Um, they're hard to score on. So, so we know we have our hands full. It, it's uh, it's probably not the team you'd want to be playing coming off a, a four game road trip. But, uh, you know, we're excited about the challenge. Excited about the opportunity, and and uh, we know we're going to play well. Saturday night, again, St. Martin's is is the last team that we faced. This first half of the GNX schedule, new coaching staff, um, and uh, you know, as far as as, as film, and you know, we've watched a little bit of film on them primarily just because we were scouting uh, opponents that they've been playing. So, so we have a lot to learn about them. Um, you know, we we were really focused on Seattle Pacific, and then uh, on Friday after after the, you know after the game's over Thursday night, Friday we'll kind of ramp up our, our preparation for St. Martin. So we have a lot to learn about them. I know they have a, a pretty big inside presence. I know they they uh, they shoot the three well, and 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 I know they've competed uh, really well with with everybody in the conference. So you know this is a, this is a big week for us. We want to finish this first half of the GNX schedule on on a, on a good note and. Uh, and we're excited about starting the second half of the GNX schedule next week. There will be a little bit of a different atmosphere going on around MSUB this weekend with the Hall of Fame ceremony coming up on Friday. In particular, in terms of men's basketball, Troy Trevilian uh, will be one of the three players inducted. I know you your career didn't overlap at all with Troy's, but just comment on what you've heard about him, some of the stories or things that make him such a special player. Well, you know, I'm excited to have Troy up here. You know, I met him, uh, I think, boy, three or four years ago. He lives down in Phoenix, and we were down there playing Grand Canyon. I got a chance to meet him down there. Um, uh, the guy that uh, the rec recruited me here, Pryor Orser, and then I was uh, Pryor's assistant down at Colorado School of Mines. Pryor got a chance to play with Troy, so I've heard some, I've heard some, uh, I've heard a lot of stories about Troy. I know he was a phenomenal player, and if you just look at his stats, I believe he was here two years, and his stats are, are, are unbelievable. I, I can only imagine what kind of uh, career he, he could have had just at MSU Billings, um, if he had been here four years. But I, I, I know he started out at the junior college, and then. And then he was able to play play when he left here. So, um, I, I, I from the stories I hear, I I, I know he's a, he's a great player. He's a very well deserved. This is a well deserved honor for him. It's it's uh, it's something that uh, that he's he's definitely worthy of. And uh, I you know from my time meeting him down there in Phoenix and and from getting to know him a little bit, I know I think he's probably he could probably still go out there right now and get get 25 for us on Saturday night. So may, I might try to sneak him in the lineup on Saturday night because. I know he's still in great shape, and and uh, scorers can score. So uh, I, I'm excited to, to see Troy this weekend. It'll be a, it'll be a fun environment, and uh, you know, like I said, a great honor for him Friday night. Looking forward to the ceremony.